Okay, back in 2002, um, I had the privilege, and, and Sandro um, had the privilege to be involved with our first ferry cam. And that was a that really was a revolutionary product for us. It was it was an electronic camera that thought it was a film camera. It it, it gave us a look of film. It wasn't better than film. It was just it was the first of its of its kind. Um, it was a camcorder that gave us the ability to over crank, so we could shoot at sixty frames, play back at twenty four. It really was a revolutionary product, and it really it it, it really pioneered um, a, yeah, a whole wave of cameras. Um, we haven't done a lot since then. There was the DVX100 and the HPX, the HPX202. Um, yeah, they were also quite revolutionary products, but we've been a little bit slow coming to the market with a full frame 4K camera that we hear now. As Tarka was saying, um, yeah, we've got a lot of unique points in this camera, and a lot of those came from user feedback. So I guess why we're so late, we didn't want to do something that had already been done before. We wanted to do something different, um, and that's what we think we've achieved. That's what we know we've achieved in the, in the very cam. So as Tucker mentioned, the dual recording, um, the dual ISO, the modular design, and the end camera colour grading. They're our, they're our hero features. Two cameras, one for creating emotion and one for creating action, the V35 and the Vericam HS. As Taka said with his sketchbook, and he loves a whiteboard, this man. I tell you, put him near a whiteboard and he just fills it in two minutes flat. Um, yeah, it, it really was user feedback. And now Taka has promised me faithfully that next time he needs user feedback, he will visit you guys and we will get some Australian feedback into this as well as international feedback. So, yeah, all, all of this came from you guys. The, the three main points, I think, that, that came out of Tarka's scribblings, um, the sensor's got to be good. We've been making sensors for a long time. A lot of time and effort and work went into this sensor. We had some fantastic workflow efficiency was with P2 in the past. From, from day one, it was really simple. No need to ingest. It was a really, really simple process. And we've tried as much as we can to carry that over into the very cam because one of the issues with, with 4K workflow since day one from, from everyone has been, it, it's been a convoluted, complex workflow. So the idea is we want to keep that workflow as simple as we did in the, in the P2 days. Um, third point, um, which is also a big point, but made up of many small little points. Being sort of later to market, we've had the benefit to sit back, get the feedback from everyone, what they liked and didn't like from, from all the other guys. So again, taking that on board and as much as we can, we, we've, not saying we've made the perfect camera, but we've 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 done as, as good as we can. So user feedback really what is what it's all about for us. In terms of design of the camera, we've we've gone back to the uh, 1990s. We have a, a dockable recorder, which is common between the two camera heads, and then the Vericam 35, and then the Vericam HS. In terms of weights and feel and button positions, they're both, they're both identical. The only difference you'll see from the outside is the physical mount, the B4 2 3rd inch versus the S35 PL. So two identical cameras, but doing an awful lot of differences inside the actual head. Um, um, three MOS, um, 2 3rd inch, full frame S35, HD, 4K. We also have a little card reader to go along with the Express P2 cards. Um, the Express P2 card in terms of its width and, and length is the same as a regular P2 card except it's a little bit fatter. Um, it's fatter because there's more in there, there's more rate control and there's certainly a lot more memory in there. Um, we didn't have the capacity, we, we didn't have the bandwidth on the original P2 cards to do what we're doing in here in 4K and here at 240 frames a second. You can put the regular cards into both cameras. In the Vericam HS, you can do up to 60 frames. In the 35, you can do 2K and 1080. Can't do 4K and 240 on the older cards, but you can use the cards in there. Oh, I guess the other product which rounds out the range of accessories from, from ours is the, the shoulder plate which is quite a neat one. You've got a lot of, lot of movement in it, facility for rails, tripod plate can go on there, or the, obviously the camera can bolt straight onto a tripod head there. Okay. 
So that's about six kilograms. So with, without the glass, without the batteries, it's around six kilograms. That's their, their, I think they're almost. I think they're almost identical. If, if not, they're, they're practically identical. Um, so I'll just run through a couple of the, the features. Um, we will get some hands on. We will fire them up. You will get a, a chance to, to play with them. Um, as, as Tarkin mentioned, one, one of the revolutionary things in, in workflow is the main and, and sub recording. Um, incorporate V-Log and also our ABC Ultra codec family. Standout features, 14 plus stops of latitude, and that's 14 stops across the whole ISO range, and we'll show you that later. In-camera colour grading, where your, inf your colour grading information lives with the files, there's no separation of those files anymore. Okay, PL as we've mentioned, um, brand new sensor, as I said, it, it's, it's our sensor, we made it from, from, from the ground up, it's a, lot of, a lot of work went into it, 14 plus stops of latitude, V-log, uh, we've covered, uh, we'll, we'll touch on the codex raw recording option shortly. ProRes, we, this is actually the first time we've supported a, a third party codec. Um, at the moment in version 2, the camera supports ProRes HQ and in version 3 coming soon, we'll support 4444 in HD. From Codex, um, that is a um, mock-up photo. The new design looks very sleek and very sexy and really matches the camera a lot better than that package does. But um, and we'll hopefully see one of those at NAB, hopefully working and hopefully we'll see some pictures from it. Um, but we've done a, a sort of yeah, real sort of collaboration with Codex around RAW. We don't offer a RAW recording camera. RAW recording at the moment is done via Codex. On the rear, um, up the back of the 35, um, we've got a 50-pin strip connector on the top of the connect on the top of the camera, and the Codex will sort of pass its information through up the top there. Um, Quite a, quite a simple little box, really. Um, it'll, it'll take the 12-bit 444 at 120 frames a second and, and record it in RAW. Um, with their two terabyte drives, with their Bolt, um, then you have the Codex workflow. So we'll touch on that a little bit more later on. Um, so the, the little card reader. And I do want the card and the reader back, please. Um, it's, a, it's a PCI Express, so it's, 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 it's our proprietary connector but it's a PCI connector. Um, so same physical connector as the P2, the older P2 card, the standard P2 cards, and they will go in that reader as well. Via USB 3, we can transfer up to 2.4 gigabits a second, so we've got blisteringly fast transfers. The P2 Express card has had slightly different dimensions in that it's a little bit, it's a little bit thicker. Um, but yeah, we'll handle those, obviously those um, increased data rates and those data rates are, are up on the standard P2 cards. So at the moment we've just got the one 256, 256 gig card and they've got to slide a little bit further on just detailing record times on that card. 